A parallel plate capacitor has an area A equals 2.00 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared and a plate separation D equals 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3rd meters. Find its capacitance. How much charge is on the positive plate if the, if the capacitor is connected to a 3.00 volt battery? Calculate the charge density on the positive plate, assuming density is uniform, and the magnitude of the electric field between the plates. Let's begin our solution with a sketch of the capacitor. This is a parallel plate capacitor. And what that means is that there are two solid conductors that are parallel planes of charge. Now as is, this conductor, this capacitor is uncharged and currently has no charge on it. But we do know that the capacitor the plates of the capacitor are separated by a distance d. We will indicate that distance to be 1.00 times 10 to the minus third meters. And we know each plate of the capacitor has an area of A, where the area is given as 2.00 times 10 to the minus fourth meters squared. For part A, we need to find the capacitance of the capacitor. Now, from the work we've done previously, we know capacitance of a capacitor depends on only the geometry of the capacitor, not on charge or potential difference. And we had shown that the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is equal to the permittivity of free space times the area of a plate divided by the separation distance between the plates. So we should remember that the permittivity of free space is equal to 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared over newton meter squared. So for, for part A, this is just plug and chug. We have all the information we need. We know what the permittivity of free space is. 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. We know the area of a plate, which is 2.00 times 10 to the minus fourth meter squared. And we know the separation distance between the plates, 1.00 times 10 to the minus three meters. Well, let's do an inline unit check to make sure everything works out. We're looking for units of capacitance. So, we see that in the numerator, a meter squared cancels with the meter squared in the denominator. What we have left over then for the capacitance is, well, plugging these values into my calculator, I get 1.77 times 10 to the minus 12. And now we have to finish sorting out the units. We have a coulomb squared over a newton meter. Now this is a form this is one form of the units for capacitance. We usually deal with farads in capacitance capacitors are talking about farads, but a coulomb squared per newton meter is also a unit and let me show you why. Well, let's start with the definition of capacitance. Capacitance we define to be the ratio of charge to the potential difference ne needed to establish that charge. Well, if we look at the units of that, the units of charge is the coulomb, the unit of volt is the joule per coulomb. Well, this ends up just being a coulomb squared over a joule. And remember, a joule is a newton meter. So we see that our units check for this problem so we could say that the capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor separated by the given distance and having the area A on each plate is equal to 1.77 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meters. And I'm going to just go ahead and turn this into a farad because that's what we call 
a ferret. For part B, we have to determine how much charge is on the positive plate if the capacitor is connected to a 3.00 volt battery. Well, let's begin our solution by adding to our sketch. We will represent the battery as two unequal parallel lines. The longer line will represent the positive terminal of the battery, while the shorter line represents the negative terminal of the battery. So the positive terminal is, is connected to the positive plate of our capacitor by a wire, and the negative terminal will be attached to the negative plate of our capacitor by a wire. Now the reason why I could say confidently that those plates are going to be either positive or negative, it's because this battery is going to take this initially uncharged capacitor and charge it. And when it charges it, positive charge will accumulate on the plate that's attached to the positive terminal of the battery, and negative charge will accumulate on the plate attached to the negative terminal of the battery. So here we go. This is, this is the amount of charge that's accumulated on each plate. Now, we do know that with this accumulation of charge, it can only occur because we've established a potential difference between the plates. And that's what the battery provides for us, the potential difference. To find the charge on each plate, we could go to the definition of capacitance, which says the capacitance is the ratio of charge to potential difference. However, I'm going to share with you what my physics professor taught to me many years ago. This professor, his name is John Elliott. If you're still out there, John, hi. This professor said, Valley College is quaint. Well, well let's write that down. This is how I remember the formula that we're going to use. Valley College is quaint. Now, I especially like this now because since I teach at West Valley College, it makes sense that we have our college. We're a little quaint little college that sits in a valley. Well, let's look at each one of these words. The valley word gives us the potential difference. College gives us the capacitance, is, that's the equal sign, and quaint is the charge. Valley College is quaint. Potential difference times capacitance is equal to charge. And all this is is just the variation of our definition of capacitance, which we said is charge divided by the magnitude of potential difference. I just remember it as Valley College is quaint. With that said, let's use the information we have to determine the charge on the positive plate. So using Valley College is quaint, we have the charge is equal to the potential difference, which we're given, I'm not going to plug in the value just yet, times the capacitance. Now, I know we calculated the capacitance in part A, but it's always good practice to not use an answer that you've, you've previously used if you've rounded. Do not use that rounded result for your new answer because every time you round and reuse that result, you introduce a little bit of error. So instead of using the rounded 1.77 times 10 to the minus 12 farad, I'm going to use this exact algebraic result, and I'm going to plug in numbers for this. In that way, I minimize rounding errors. So what we get is we get the charge is equal to the potential difference, 3.00 volts, times the permittivity of free space, which is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 Coulomb squared over Newton meter squared times the area of a plate, which is 2.00 times 10 to the minus 4 meter squared, 
divided by the separation distance of the plates, which is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Let's go ahead and simplify units and recognizing that our final unit should be a coulomb since we are looking for a charge. I see a meter squared in the numerator. We'll cancel with a meter squared in the denominator. I see I have a volt per meter. Well, a volt is a joule per coulomb. So, and a joule, a joule is a newton meter. So that volt is a newton meter per coulomb. Notice the newton in the numerator cancels with a newton in the denominator. And that meter in the numerator cancels with the last meter in the denominator. And a coulomb in the denominator cancels with a coulomb in the numerator. So we are left with units of a coulomb, which tells me that at least we're on the right track. So now plugging all of this into my calculator, I get that the charge on the positive plate, which is also the magnitude of the charge on the negative plate, is equal to 5.31 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs. For part C, we have to calculate the surface charge density on each plate. Now, this surface charge density, we know that for this parallel plate capacitor, the surface charge density will be considered to be uniform. So what that means is surface charge density is going to be equal to the ratio of the charge on a plate over the area of that plate. Well, again, we just found charge in the previous step. But let's use the exact algebraic expression for the charge instead of our rounded result. That exact algebraic result was the potential difference times epsilon naught times the area over the distance between the plates. So that is the charge we found in the previous step. And then this is divided by the area of the plate. So I'm going to say divided by A. The area in the numerator cancels with an area in the denominator. And now we have an expression for the surface charge density on a plate of our parallel plate capacitor. Let's plug in numbers now. The potential difference is 3.00 volts. The permittivity of free space is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared over newton meter squared. And the separation distance between the plates is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Let's do a unit check. A meter in the denominator cancels. Oh, well, that's not going to cancel. I'm going to do this unit check a different way because that's going to be a meter cubed total. So I'm going to let's look at the units of the volt. The volt again is a is a joule per coulomb. A joule is a newton meter, so the volt is a newton meter per coulomb. I see that a coulomb in the denominator cancels with the coulomb in the numerator. I see a newton meter in the denominator. I'm sorry, a newton meter in the numerator cancels with a Newton meter in the denominator. So the units we have left is a coulomb per meter squared. Now remember a coulomb per meter squared makes sense because the definition of our charge density says it is charge per unit area, coulomb per meter squared which means that our charge density is, after plugging the numbers into our calculator, we get 2.66 times 10 to the minus 8th coulombs per meter squared.
Now let's find the electric field or the magnitude of the electric field between the plates. I'm going to add some electric field lines to our picture. So remember, we know that the electric field between the plates of a capacitor is going to be uniform. We have shown that previously, or at least we could consider it to be uniform if the separation distance between the plates is relatively small in comparison to the size of the plates. And that's certainly true here. Now, what that means for us in practice is it really means that most points in the capacitor are far from the edges of the capacitor. So what that means is the electric field is uniform for the most part. Now, of course, there's going to be fringing of the electric field at the edges of our conducting plates. But by and large, we could consider that the electric field in this capacitor is uniform going from the positive plate and ending on the negative plate. Our goal is to find this electric field. There's a variety of ways we could find this electric field. One way is to acknowledge that a potential difference is, a, is equal to minus the line integral of the electric field. So we could use this expression to figure it out because we know the potential difference, or, or better yet, since we know the potential difference, maybe we might be able to figure out how to evaluate the gradient. I think that's going to be a lot of work, especially since we're not given the function of electric potential, we're just given the difference between two points. Well, let's rely on work we've done previously. We have previously shown that the electric field between the plates of a capacitor is equal to the charge density on each plate over epsilon naught. So let's use this, especially since we just calculated the charge density in the previous step, and we know what the permittivity of free space is. The surface charge density is equal to the potential difference times the permittivity of free space over the separation distance of the plate. And this is divided by the permittivity of free space. Notice the expression for the permittivity of free space cancels in the numerator and the denominator. So we get the magnitude of the electric field is equal to the potential difference across the plates over the separation distance. So let's plug in our values. So the electric field is 3.00 volts, or I'm sorry, the potential difference is 3.00 volts divided by 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now notice the units what we have here. We have a volt per meter. And it just so happens that a volt per meter is equivalent to a newton per coulomb. Try verifying that for yourself. But this is all to say that our units check out. And since our units check out, I am going to plug these values now into my calculator and get that the magnitude of the electric field between the plates of the capacitor is equal to 3.00 times 10 to the minus 3 volts per meter.